Welcome back to American Arms Channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're taking a look at the brand new Benelli Super Black Eagle 3 in 28 gauge. 5.5 pounds of dove, teal, and big duck crushing awesomeness. And everything you love about the Super Black Eagle in a nice light package. Let's get at it. If you've tuned into this video, you're probably wondering what you can learn about the all new Super Black Eagle 3 in 28 gauge. Now, this is new for 2022 and currently it is July of 2022. And it is sweltering out here guys, so forgive me for <laughs> looking a little disheveled possibly as we go through here and, and pouring down bullets. It's near 100 degrees here on the 4th of July in central Nebraska, so it's a little hot on the plains and it's a little muggy. So I'm sure you can uh, understand it. <laughs> Forgive me. Colder weather is coming and with it hunting season. So why not put our minds in a cooler place and talk about a very lightweight, handy, oh, so sweet and smooth 28 gauge shotgun from Benelli. So the Super Black Eagle 3 was introduced in 2017 and originally it only came out in a three and a half inch Super Magnum for the 12 gauge. Very, very good gun. Uh, the high POI, etc., cetera, was, uh, was uh, a, a point of contention and still is for a lot of people. It seems that Benelli's not quite able in the 12 gauge and even the 20 gauge model is able to get that kink completely out. They seem to shoot either where they should or excessively high. I'm not here to argue that today. We've covered that um, at different stages with my learning experience with the Super Black Eagle 3. Uh, but we will make a note of it if this gun decides to shoot pretty high. But for the most part, a lot of that high shooting with Benelli field guns is going to be getting used to the vent rib design, which when they're designed like this one is, and like the 12 gauge and 20 gauge Super Black Eagle models are, are going to be centered for point of impact, point of aim at approximately 16 yards and from there out will be approximately a 60 40 to 70 30 split on your pattern so with that in mind the one good thing about the super black eagle 3 that leads off for feature sets you're going to see on this that will not be present on the other models is the carbon fiber vent rib this does not only allow you uh, to have a little bit lighter weight gun with the same sighting picture but it does allow you to swap this out should it become damaged or potentially i'd have to confirm this but potentially with the same barrel length ethos model which shoots more of a 50 50 60 40 spread with its vent rib design you'll be able to swap that over might try that out but at 155 bucks a pop uh those vent ribs are a little bit pricey but it might be worth it to you if you really love your suit black eagle 3 in 28 gauge but want to make sure it shoots to point of aim. The gun has the same exact buttstock and trigger guard system as the 12 and 20 gauge models. 
um, but you'll notice everything forward of that looks an awful lot like, well, the exception of the handguard, an ethos. We'll go over some in-depth in a minute on this compared to the 12 gauge model, but overall it is a very, very sweet shooting, nice handling, super lightweight, quick and nimble shotgun that is the creme de la creme of 28 gauges in my opinion. But you still have what is a modern day synthetic duck gun at heart. So. Without further ado, let's take a look at the box. Let's see what you get in the package. And then let's take a look at the 12 gauge variant and see how the two compare. Just keep in mind, my 12 gauge is from 2017. It is the second production run. It was the first run of the Optifade Timber camo dip. So it might have some differences from what you've seen in your package if you've bought one since then. So with that in mind, let's take a look. Here we can see we have the box now, identical box over here holding the 12 gauge variant. We got the 28 gauge variant on top. And of course, just for aesthetics, we've got some boss shot shells, three inch and two and three quarter inch 28 gauge shells. We'll get into those in a minute, but here we go. Looks pretty standard for an Ethos or Super Black Eagle three case. Very nice case. I've used mine extensively. I know some guys aren't a fan of a case that comes with a gun, but Mine has been quite handy for taking on hunts and for going to the range. Opening it up, just like the prior examples, we've got our nice burlap sack lining and foam padding. The gun will come in a barrel sleeve and a receiver slash stock and end sleeve. Don't really need to keep those. I just kept them to show you. You'll have your oiler bottle. You will have your spacers. This is already meant already a difference here you have a spacer that goes between the stock and or excuse me the fore end and the bolt and this will mat into the receiver and then you have the front here which will hold a space between your fore end and your barrel nut so those two packaged items you don't have to store your gun like that but it is how it is packaged and then of course a cute little 28 gauge size super black eagle three label for the gun rack you can keep that if you want and then we have our choke kit mine came a little bit busted up but it does come with your five chokes your 28 gauge choke wrench and thread cleaner as well as all of your shims and drop and cast plates i have adjusted the gun for myself already and it is a fairly simple straightforward method the instruction manual goes over how to size it for yourself. Uh, magnetic clasp on that, so it doesn't hold it super secure, um, but it does keep your chokes organized to stay in your case. If you're gonna take your chokes hunting, I recommend that you get something different because this box is not only bulky, but you're gonna lose stuff out of it. So your extended chokes are going to be modified and improved cylinder. I have improved cylinder in the gun right now. And then you're going to have cylinder, improved, modified, and full for your flush fit chokes. I'm going to recommend that uh, if you need something different and you want extended, to take a look at the Carlson's, Briley, or Benelli choke systems. True Lock also makes chokes for the 28 gauge. They're all going to be a 28 gauge cryo choke. Not the mobile, but the cryo choke for the Benelli Super Black Eagle 3 in line with its other gauged models. Other than that, there's your box. And of course, in it, you're gonna have your fantastic 28 gauge. And this is going to come in your choice of, I believe right now, three or four different camo patterns and two barrel lengths, 26 and 28 inch. I don't believe they will add a 24, but with the popularity that these guns are having now, the smaller bores, the 20s, 28s, and 410s are getting, especially when considering turkey hunting and tungsten super shot loads, it wouldn't surprise me if a turkey model of the 28 gauge was eventually offered. We'll see how well this sells, but for the small bore guys, I think this is going to be quite a hit as it gives you everything you want with the 28 gauge and something like the Ethos at several hundred dollars cheaper, as well as a more durable and not so much to be cared about finish so that it can serve as a modern synthetic stocked waterfowl gun. Now let's take a look at the 12 gauge and see how the two compare. 
All right, so taking a look at the two, we can see here we've got the 28 gauge on the bottom and the 12 gauge on the top. There is, of course, a significant weight difference, and you can see, absolutely, we'll get these shot shell boxes out of the way, you can see the slimmer profile of the receivers, four ends, and barrel with the 28 compared to the 12. You can also see how the ribs stack up against one each other and how they are pretty dang identical as far as profile goes. One thing to note is that the 12 gauge variant has a very small bead, whereas the 28 has a very large bead by comparison. It is also extremely bright. And in fact, I find it slightly distracting. I'll go for a while and see how I like it, but I might ultimately pop that bead off and go with a plain rib on the 28 gauge shotgun. It's just a little bit distracting to my eye and pulls away from my target, which you don't aim a shotgun, you look with a shotgun and that's how you'll become a better wing shooter is with that basic concept. But I'll digress and say that really uh, there's a major difference right there. Uh, the, the carbon fiber rib looks to be a little bit higher profile, but honestly, when you take into consideration how skin, much skinnier the barrel is on the 28 gauge, it really puts you at approximately the same height and gives you approximately the same point of aim and point of impact with the bore axis to the 12 gauge variant. Everything from trigger guard back is effectively the same gun. The butt stocks are identical. The cheek piece is the same. You have the same number of chevrons. The butt pad is the same. The design of the forend is the same, albeit that the 28 gauge is quite a bit slimmer than the 12. Now this can mean a bit of a problem if you uh, like to sneak your fingers up towards that barrel as it's getting hot and that 28 will get very hot very quick, especially on a summer hot summer day like today. Uh, whereas the 12 will do the same, but uh, you've got a little bit more meat to play with and it fills your palm a little bit better. Your four end cap or barrel nut is the, is the same design, but it is smaller on the 28 of course. Your bolt is the same relative design, but it is more petite, of course, and shorter on the 28, being a three inch gun compared to the 12. Your receiver lengths are pretty dang close, but the 12 is definitely going to be longer and your internal geometries are going to be different. I will tell you though, that the trigger guards are so similar, you can actually swap the 28 into the 12, but the pin does not line up to retain it. And in fact, when you run the bolt on the 12, it will actuate the lifter and everything. So a lot of the internal components are extremely similar, if not the same to the 12. It's most likely going to be the same thing for the 20 gauge variants, but I do not have one of those, so I cannot comment on it. But I will say that having handled the 20 gauge variant in store, that the 28 is a standalone frame. It does share a lot of similarities. It's not that much smaller than a 20, but it is definitely its own standalone gun. So they didn't simply slap a 28 gauge on a 20 gauge frame, just like they didn't simply slap a 20 gauge on a 12 gauge frame. So they did scale these guns appropriately. And when it comes to the 28 versus a 20 on the frame, there is a little bit of a difference, but primarily you're going to be worried about that barrel profile and it is super skinny and super lightweight. And that carbon fiber rib is definitely reducing that weight even more. So there is that. Now let's take a look at one internal difference that will be of interest to guys who do know about, and I have demonstrated before on the channel, how to lower the point of impact with the SBE 3 and 12 gauge versus what the 28 gauge looks like. And I've not put this on the pattern board yet to see where the point of impact is relatively, but we're gonna take a look at how these two magazine tubes differ. With our barrel nuts off, I'm gonna remove the charging handle, or excuse me, the bolt handle on the 12 gauge, and I'm going to pull the forend and barrel assembly off. Here we can see the also from the all too familiar barrel stop ring in which the barrel ring here contacts or doesn't contact based on how you've tuned it and how much you cinch down that forend nut and that can ultimately adjust your point of impact should you have point of impact issues. It's not a guaranteed fix, but it does work for quite a few shotguns and I've demonstrated it before. On the 28 gauge variant, again, I'm gonna pull the handle here and 
off comes the barrel receipt upper receiver cover and fore end we can see that we've got a really lightened out really skeletonized barrel ring here but we take a look at our magazine tube our cute little 28 gauge magazine tube two rounder isn't that so cute pass through by the way so extensions are possible but we have no barrel stop ring so let's take a look at how this interfaces here and we can see that honestly it comes up and there is no shelf it forces on back and if we put our nut on if i can get it to catch the threads it cinches right down there is nothing forcing it so potentially this won't have the high impact issues maybe it will i don't know but that is a design difference and is very much akin to the ethos but the ethos have a blind magazine tube another difference that's going to be with the 20 and 28 gauge variants is going to be this ethos-esque upper receiver cover i'm not sure what benelli is calling this in their manual for a part but I'm going to call it the upper receiver cover. What is integral to the barrel and what the barrel is threaded into on the 12 gauge variant is actually a separate aluminum piece here on the 20 and 28 gauge variants and does have to be installed before you put it on the gun. So there is that and it is not drilled and tapped. If you need to put a red dot or some form of optic on this shotgun, your best bet is going, is going to be to go with a speed bead and the standard Super Black Eagle 3 pattern speed bead will most likely, or similar red dot mounts, micro red dot mounts, is going to be what you will want to purchase for this shotgun as the stocks and the receiver mating are identical between the three gauges offered. So with that noted, let's get the gun back together and talk about a few other features. One feature I do want to point out is that the bolt release on the 28 gauge variant is going to be fairly close in principle to the 12 gauge variant. You can see the 12 gauge protrudes a bit here, but it's a lot shorter on the 12 gauge than it is the 28. You can press anywhere on this just like you can with a Vinci and send it home. It's harder to get the bolt to go home when you press on the rear but the front sticks out just enough for you to hit the one thing i don't like though is i see this as potentially being easy to miss or hard to get to in really cold weather this being a waterfowl gun even though it's more of a light duck gun than an all-around waterfowl gun i still may be hunting it and hunting with it in temperatures where i have a heavy bulky glove the trigger guard and the safety are the same as any super black eagle 3 but that dang old bolt release is not that big so i do have a briley enhanced bolt release on the way and we'll be giving that one a try but it is a little bit of something that you might want to consider because in order to enhance that it's going to cost you at least a hundred dollars and it's already a sixteen hundred dollar shotgun as it sits out of the box so that's something to consider the, the bolt handle is plenty big enough but i will be replacing it with an identical briley I will say though that compared to the 12 gauge, this takes a lot less pressure to release and a lot of that has to do with the strength of the action spring. Out of the box, this gun had a little bit, just a touch of roughness when you cycle through, but I have barely in 80 to 100 rounds to it right now. And it is super, super slick as most all Benelli's will be out of the box. So there is something uh, tisk to consider. So bolt release is a bit different from your 12 gauge model and it just doesn't quite stick out that far. So it could be a problem for some guys, especially with big mitts and heavy gloves on. So there is that. Another thing to consider is that your steel ribbed variants on your 12 and 20 will have a mid bead on the 12. The 20 gauge, I have not seen one with a mid bead. Perhaps I'm mistaken, but I'm not gonna comment too much on the 20 because I don't own one. And I haven't spent much time with one, let alone ever shot one. Um, but on the carbon fiber vent rib, you're not going to have a mid bead. Not too many guys are going to be upset about that, but it is a difference to note. 
The loading port on the 12 gauge has always been exceptional. And here on the 28, it's pretty dang good for a 28 gauge shotgun. Can you put your big old thumb like mine in there? Nope, you're gonna get pinched. But if you turn it sideways, it's pretty easy to get in there. I will note, however, that when you are trying to slide a shell in here, you're going to need to use the tip of your thumb to really click past that shell catch. But just like the 12 and 20 models, you have a three piece shell catch, which is very easy to unload. So you do not need to cycle them through the action. Super easy. And I really don't have a problem. As long as you run it with authority as such, you can do your offhand loading, whether you're right or left handed and get them in there nice and quick. So not really a problem overall. You will notice there is a little bit of a difference with that lifter compared to the 12 gauge, um, but it doesn't really matter ultimately. And you will scuff that up as you load the gun multiple times, but it doesn't really matter because it's a duck gun. Very easy to load, very easy to get the bolt lock back. It's everything you love about a Benelli Super 90 pattern, simply in its 3.5 to fourth generation in all honesty, and in 28 gauge. So there's really, other than those, not too many differences. So now let's see what we can do with a modified extended choke at about 25 to 30 yards and put it on the pattern board with some three inch number four, three inch number three slash five, and two and three quarter inch number five boss bismuth. So as I am melting like a snowman in the summer heat here, we're gonna to transition to pattern testing, as I just said. And of course, we're going to use the extended modified choke that comes with the SBE-3. So our load here is going to be the Boss Shot Shell's excellent two and three quarter inch number five copper plated business. This is a seven eighths of an ounce charge. So it is relatively what a 20 gauge will commonly use for a short two and three quarter inch or standard field load. We're gonna start with this number five shell. Isn't that a little cutie? And I know for a fact out of my SA-28 Mossberg, this was an excellent flight stopper last year and I preferred to pair it with the Carlson's Improved Modified Choke for best results. And it was great for 35 yards and in. If you watch Matt at High Prairie Sportsman, out west of me here in Nebraska, you will notice that this is almost exclusively the shot size and shell he shot last year, and he beat birds up like crazy. As long as you get him into the ranges that make sense for a 28 gauge, it will work. So at 25 yards, let's take a look and see what kind of teal stomping patterns we can get out of this modified choke. And it might give us an indicator of whether or not we do need to choke tighter or if we're okay at modified. Let's throw it in the gun and send it down range. All right, so paced off at 25 yards. Unfortunately, did not grab my laser rangefinder for this shooting session, but uh, we're at approximately 25. This is a pretty common distance for decoying and passing teal shots out of the modified choke, boss number five, Let's take a look. That felt pretty dang good. Let's go down range and take a look at it. All right, guys, all I have to say is, wow. Um, that's actually a pretty dang tight pattern for 25 yards. I think the modified choke is definitely going to be more than enough. Now, of course, we want to test this out at 30 and 35 and even 40 to see what kind of results we get. But if you're on, you're on. Now, I definitely pulled a little bit low and left, but holding the bead just under the point of aim here, we can see that I'm actually a little bit low. So this higher bead that they've got on this vent rib might actually mean that you have to put it right in line with your target. So we'll see how that shakes out over time. Um, but that might kind of mess you up a little bit if you're used to the smaller bead and holding under on the larger bore SBE threes. So something to consider, but amazing pattern, really beautiful, honestly, with that number five bismuth at 25 yards. So let's take this board down and let's take a look at the three inch ounce and 16th number fours at 25 yards and see what we get. But we'll see how it fares as we increase the shot size. That's definitely gonna smoke any sort of teal. You could probably go to an improved cylinder 
I'd have really good results in tight and be pretty good out to about 30, 35 yards. Improved Modified will help you step out to that 40 yard game or even a full, but when you're running with a lower shot charge like this, uh, really, you just need to make sure you're being conscious of your choking, your shot string, and your pattern density for the ranges you're shooting at. And the 28 excels at 10 to 35. So let's go put some bigger shot and larger charges on the board. All right, so now again, we're gonna be using the Boss three inch number four ounce and 1 16th payload. And these three inch shells are pretty stinking cute. The 28 gauge is cute anyways, but these kind of look like a little lady's cigar, don't they? Uh, I've never shot a three inch 28 gauge, so I don't expect it to be mind blowing, but it is interesting to be thinking about throwing a over one ounce payload down range, the 28 gauge, especially in non-toxic shot. So let's take a look and see how she does. I am actually going to go against my instinct when shooting a Benelli and hold the bead directly over the point of aim. Let's see what we can get. Maybe the increased recoil or payload will cause it to shoot high. We're at a close enough range, it won't really matter. We'll still get a good pattern evaluation. Let's put the shot on the board. Three inch, approximately 25 yards, ounce and 16th, number fours, modified choke. Let's take a look. Definitely a bit more push on that three inch shell, but nothing to complain about especially in a 5.5 pound gun. Let's go down range and take a look. All right, so that is again a pretty dang nasty pattern. Uh, I just got paint on my hand, but that's all right. <laughs> but we can see we've got a little bit of holes here. We've got an incredibly tight core. Um, it's not entirely unexpected in my mind to see a little bit of this clumping, even at 25 yards, just because that's a pretty hefty payload for was effectively a 0 0.550 inch bore. It's a 28 gauge. I mean, it's not meant to be throwing huge, enormous charges of shot down range. That said, I feel very comfortable that this would be a very exceptional late season load. The number four shot I have known to be an exceptional duck getter all the way into late January. It's just perhaps not the very best for goose past maybe November as that down starts to thicken up and you're dealing with bigger and heavier birds. But I think that this is a fantastic pattern and I think we'll see much of the same out of the three slash five. So let's take a look at that. I'm pretty dang happy with this. I think that that's definitely a mallard smoker and would definitely put down some geese. As we step out, that increased payload might mean more, but we'll tackle that in another video. So let's take our third and final shot with the three inch, one sixteenth ounce, three slash five mix. All right, of course, finally, we're gonna run the three five mix, ounce and sixteenth, three inch. This should be a great late season slash mixed duck and goose load as well. Let's see how she performs on the board. All right, once again, approximately 25 yards, three five mix. You guys know the drill. Let's take a look. Again, that three inch has got some more punch. I would make it, um, make it. I would say it's akin to firing a nice high velocity, quote unquote, ounce and an eighth or a standard velocity ounce and a quarter out of about a seven pound 12 gauge. Really not gonna beat you up, doesn't hurt, but you can tell there's a lot more recoil and impulse to it than your standard two and three quarter inch load. Honestly, though, when you're focused on the birds, you're not going to notice it. It's going to make no difference. And uh, I like it. It's really cool. Definitely ejected well out of the SBE 3 Let's go down range and take a look at that pattern. All right. So honestly, that is a gorgeous pattern. We can see fives. We can see threes mixed in. That's going to be a great big duck late season goose and duck mixed load for in tight, basically 35 yards and less. This 25 yard pattern is exceptionally tight. Um, I really would say that we'd need to test it stepping back to 30 and 35 to see what this choke does, but I'm going to anticipate 
it's going to throw a little bit tighter pattern than what it is labeled as. So I'm really, um, I'm really pleased with that. Honestly, might run the two and three quarter inch number fives with the improved cylinder during teal season and keep the modified in my pocket just in case they stop working tight enough. Inside of 25 yards, that improved cylinder is going to be perfect. At 20 and further, that modified choke looks like it's going to be a great choice. But you can see here, you really don't have a lot of margin for error for a duck. So really, I would say that um, you'd want to go with the improved cylinder choke out of this gun for most close range work, which the 28 is perfect at. And for doves, um, well, that'd be a different pattern test, wouldn't it? It's not going to throw the same. Bigger shot will generally just be a touch tighter with different chokes. In my experience, doesn't mean that's yours, but with the guns that I've patterned, I see overall just a touch tighter the larger you make the pellet, which makes sense. Uh, but really that 3.5 mix is awesome. I would love to see a dedicated quote unquote three inch 28 gauge goose load with the number threes. I think that would be a really cool load. Um, that might be something that eventually I hand load, but the three fives here, I say are just as good as the fours, maybe a little bit better pattern. So Bravo Boss and Bravo Benelli. It's a fantastic combination right there. It's definitely gonna kill some birds this season. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning into this video on the Super Black Eagle 3 and 28 gauge. Honestly, it seems to be just a slimmer trimmer, smaller board version of the Super Black Eagle 3 we've come to know and love or hate for some people. And it actually shoots to point of aim right behind the bead. That's pretty crazy at 25 yards, isn't it? So it's gonna be a little bit of an adjustment going between the 12 gauge and this gun. And before I sweat all over it and look even grosser than I already do on camera, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Are you considering picking up one of these? What do you think about the 28 gauge for waterfowl use? I'd love to hear your thoughts and input. And as always, God bless, keep your powder dry. I'll see you in the next video.